Not a bit excited when I recently went on to the Costco.ca website a week ago and discovered that they have another pair of work gloves that are gauntlet style from Holmes and they are a heated work glove for $100 Canadian which would be about let's call it $76, $77 US However, I don't see them on the Costco.com website for you that are located in the States. So I ordered a pair in order to try them out. And you're able to look at the specs and I was under no illusions as to what to expect. I've learned from previous research and trial and error that a 7.4 volt battery pack is just not putting out enough oomph to really produce a lot of heat with the types of pads that they use in these things which is usually a resistive sort of carbon fiber and um, as well the milliamp rating on these I'm thinking I know that you need probably an excess at uh, maybe uh, when I'm putting those uh, heat pads to test you're drawing more than an amp and with this having the capacity of two amps, the maximum time you, you would expect out of these guys to get any sort of heat would be no more than two hours. So I already knew that I might be looking at ways to hack these to get some better performance out of them. And indeed last night, uh, because they arrived yesterday, I went out for a walk. Although it's not really cold enough, uh, it's only minus one Celsius. I tried them out and I could barely feel any heat coming out of them even on the highest setting. So I'm going to take a deeper look into these and see what in fact their performance is and we're going to start out by measuring the internal heat after I've had a chance to put it up at its highest capacity. So for this video I'm just going to look at these gloves and uh, the properties they have when they are in their stock configuration and then maybe in part two we'll go after looking at a hack that we can build to bring the battery capacity up not only in terms of its total capacity for storage but also by bringing up the voltage and therefore getting maybe some higher heat values in these gloves as well. So last night before I uh, took off to try the gloves out, I was glancing at the box and I was getting kind of confused when I was looking at this section right here under heating settings, uh, which I was trying to get familiar with so I'd know how to operate the gloves. So they've got um, six hours at the highest setting down to two point five hours for the lowest heat setting which of course doesn't make any sense at all and so clearly what someone has done when they designed this box was they got it all backwards I look at this and then they've got 125 F and I'm thinking that's not even close like where did they get this from um, 65 C is closer to 150F, it's actually 149. But how they ended up with these figures is totally beyond me. Then let's move over to the manual. And what you'll see here is somebody did get it right on the manual so that whoever did this did not have the advantage of the manual. Who knows what came first. Here, I want to start with a test and see how much current these gloves are drawing between the different settings uh, of which they have three. So I've just completed taking the voltage off a fully charged battery pack and it's showing 8.33 volts which is about what we would expect. And I have put the clamp meter on here and we're going to reset it to zero with the glove shut off and now I'm going to turn it on red supposedly being the highest setting and it looks like we'll call that a current draw of 1.5 amps now let's go over to the medium setting of blue 
and it looks like it doesn't actually how it's achieving this can you see here it's going between the same amount of current draw but it's cycling it and so it's giving it um, what one two a couple of seconds off and then a couple of seconds on and but otherwise largely drawing about the same amount of current through there so that the secret is it's not regulating the temperature it's just regulating a constant current draw uh, by turning it on and off and on and off so there's no thermal control built in to the pads in here and so if that theory is correct when we go down to the next level the green one we should find that it shuts off for even longer than it is now so let's just watch this when it moves back over to 1.3 on 1000 to 1003 it's about two and a half that it's on for now let's go over here to green on 1000 you can see that it's off this thing has gotten up to about from 39 when I turned it on to already about 55 in what I would say is around five minutes and for your reference I have put the probe from this temperature sensor right about uh, it's right about here in that finger Alright, so the red light just went out on the glove and we're at 150. So we're going to stop it there. And as you recall, it took me about five minutes to get the timer running. So we fell short of two hours on the red zone and our temperature. Uh, it was around 26, 25, as you can see now that it's gone off. It um, is dropping rapidly. And I think what we want to do now, which will be very uh, revealing, will be to see what voltage we're at at the battery. My multimeter is still giving me a reading at 6.33 volts, where we've reached our termination voltage and um, that is encouraging in that it would indicate that there is a battery management system somewhere in this system um, so what's the conclusion are these gloves worth it when they're straight out of the box um, at a hundred dollars Canadian I would have to say no I wouldn't recommend these because you saw the temperature that we were getting after we put the ice pack on and I think that you'll find that what we were getting on our probe in that finger was not going to keep your hands warm in real life uh, at that level of, of about 26 degrees C and it definitely didn't hit the um, 65 that it was indicating it was and it definitely did not hit that 2.5 hour of uh, capacity that they're claiming.